No, it's not a matter of being cowardly. I, in fact, it might be a sort of a refreshing, closing, beautiful thing to just say, you know what? Francis ain't the Pope. I don't have to worry about it anymore. That sounds kind of attractive. But it's not the answer. Theologically or strategically. Strategically. Let's talk about that for just a few minutes, because here's the thing, friends. What is Francis first and foremost? I think most people would agree he's a bully in a big, big, big bully pulpit, right? We all know that. That's what he is. So how do we deal with a bully? You got to hit him where he's weakest, right? You have to oppose him where he's weakest. Now remember one thing. This man has gotten rid of everything. He got out of the papal apartments. He got rid of the red shoes. He got rid of the, everything. There was a, moved into a hotel trying to show his little black briefcase, the whole bit. Trying to show us again and again that he's a man of the people, right? The one thing he never nixed, though, is what? His white robe. The white robe, the white cassock. Why is that? He is the guy dressed in white. He is the, one, the man living in the Vatican. The entire world recognizes him as Pope. And guess what? Francis doesn't give a damn if we say he's not the Pope. In fact, that's what he wants us to do. So if we hit him there, you're not the Pope, you're not the Pope. Well, we're hitting him right where he's strongest, right where he's strongest in the eyes of the whole world. That's where he's strongest. You can't contest that because the whole world, that's your jury. They're all looking at the guy dressed in white, living in the Vatican, like, well, of course he's the Pope. These traditional Catholics are a bunch of nutters. And that's what he's counting on. You see? He's trolling us, friends, because he wants us out of his way. Now think about this. I've got friends who are state of a contest. This is not a personal grudge match with them. There were guys, I don't know, one of them was John Salza, I think, that were writing books against the state of a contest. They wanted me to get on, on board with all that. And I'm like, you know what? I want nothing to do with that because I don't blame the state of a contest for the scandal that they feel in their, in their hearts. I just disagree with them. You see? I'm similarly scandalized. I just disagree with the approach. And the reality is that Pope Francis, for all his, you know, on, on, on the plain interviews and statements, raving against Catholic, traditional, faithful Catholics, he never says one word about one group. And that's the Sede Vacantis. Again, for your Protestant friends, Sede Vacantis, those who say the seat is empty, we have no Pope. Francis seems completely unbothered by them. Why? Because he's not threatened by Sede Vacantism. You see? He's not threatened by those who say we don't have a Pope because he can look at the whole world and say, do you have a Pope? And the whole world says, yes, you're the Pope. So he never mentions them. Conversely, he's positively obsessed with us, isn't he? He is obsessed with us. Why? He's obsessed with diocesan priests who offer the Latin mass, diocesan priests. Why? He scolds us on a weekly basis, calling us rigid and pharisaical. Why? I'm seriously, why? Ask yourself why? Why is he fixated on us? Why isn't he fixated on those who say he's not the Pope? It's because he knows they're never gonna get that off the ground. So he cancels our mass, why is, why is that? Why is he trying to drive us out of our own churches? Don't you get it? It's because our opposition, friends, is growing stronger every day. You did that. I did that. We all did this together. What do you think? There's some sort of a piece of poetry when we say unite the clans? It is working, friends. All over the world, it is working. We're staying in the church. We're resisting. We're not leaving. And Francis is literally freaking out over it now. We have cardinals, we have bishops, we have priests, we have 20,000 sharp pilgrims. We have Catholic media personalities such as <laughs> EWTN's Raymond Arroyo and, and, and Robert Royal and, you know, F Father Murray and these guys, right? Yeah, we got those guys are all sounding like remnant columnists now suddenly, right? But we also have non-Catholic pretty powerful media influencers who are also seeing straight through what Francis is doing. 
I find it interesting that the current pope is talking about evil. The last pope is talking about evil. But I think they're kind of pointing at each other a little bit. You know, I don't think they're on the same side. I think they're both using evil, but I think they're not talking about the same evil. I'm not, I'm not saying that we all agree on every point, but we agree on this. I've been on Steve Bannon's show a couple times. Steve Bannon put the president of the United States in the White House a few years ago. He's a powerful guy. He's on to Francis. Of course, we mentioned Cardinal Muller. Archbishop Vigano leading the charge, Bishop Schneider, the entire Society of St. Pius X, the entire fraternity of St. Peter. These are thousands now of priests, tens and hundreds of thousands of faithful. The Institute of Christ the King, the Society of the Good Shepherd. How many more can I name? Lots more. Along with literally hundreds of diocesan priests and many bishops. Not enough, but they're coming along, aren't they? What we're talking about here, friends, is millions of Catholics worldwide, lay Catholics worldwide too all getting stronger every day against the Francis Revolution, which it also entails an awakening about the revolution of Vatican II. This is a pivotal moment in the history of the church. Yes, it might be the end of the world, but my gosh, are we going to go down swinging with a lot of people. We are not going to send the scaffold by ourselves like Archbishop Lefebvre did. There's a lot of people now, a lot of powerful people. Don't believe me? Look at Bishop Strickland. <laughs> <laughs> the Vatican is making fools of themselves trying to shut this man down. Why? Because he's too doggone Catholic. And guess what? The world sees Bishop Strickland as a sympathetic character. You don't even have to be Catholic to look at this holy man on his knees and say, why is Francis the bully beating up on him for being too Catholic? Do you see how it works? But when we stand up out of frustration, out of love, out of dis desperate concern, I'm not, I'm not describing any evil motives to anybody who does this. But when we succumb to the, I think the temptation to stand up and say, Francis is not the Pope, we jeopardize that worldwide coalition of opposition, right? We divide it and we, we, we threaten to destroy it. We divide it right down the middle and friends, for what? Does it, does it change anything? I use the analogy like we're on a battlefield. The enemy is advancing. They're vastly outnumbering us. They have better, more powerful weapons. They're right in our faces. And <laughs> I look at you and I say, well, hang on a second though. That, the general that's leading these bad guys, these, he's not a real general. <laughs> he's a fraud. What? difference does it make? They're going to kill us. History and a future pope will tell us what the general is, what Francis is at some point. But our job now is to simply keep the faith of our fathers and resist anyone, even the pope, who tries to destroy it exactly as St. Robert Bellarmine told us to do and so many other great theologians. And we say, he's not the Pope, what do we do now? We're, we're doing it right now. I had to do a show over this. Because as soon as we say this, we begin fighting with each other. As soon as one of us starts in on this, and this is the way it's been for years and years and years in my experience. Somebody says, I can't take it anymore. He's not the Pope. Then what happens? Instead of focusing laser sharp on the problem, which is in the Vatican, we start focusing on each other, citing each other in, right? Taking each other out rather than formally resisting the Pope. And that's where Francis wins. Because then you factor in the spiritual component of this discussion. And as I say, I'm not a theologian, but the theologians out there have an